Hi there, Veldrun here. Uh, today uh, I'm bringing you the semi-final from the regional in Copenhagen, Denmark. And this is taken from the live stream, so it will not be me commentating, just as in the previous game. It's Paul Erik Holmerun, who is commentating on this game. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Casper uh, has deployed exactly in the same fashion as he did in the last game. He's in the, the top right corner for me with his four Y-Wings. All of them are equipped with the Eye Cannon and with the BTL A4 title, which means that they are able to fire their primary weapon. And then they will also be able to fire their equipped Iron Cannon turrets, but only inside arc. So Casper's uh, goal is to keep his uh, not very maneuverable Y-Wing fighters pointed in the right direction and then try to ionize the target and then set up a kill box and kill it. And uh, Rasmus, on the other hand, has uh, two of the Emperor's finest fighters, the most expensive one, two Thai defenders, Colonel Vasari and uh, Countess Riot. And he's backing them up with the Emperor, placed in uh, the usual lamp shuttle, an Omnicron group pilot. And he has given it the free system upgrade uh, collision detector, so he can fly over stuff without taking damage. Or at least not as much as usual. <coughs> so, uh, the game is about to start now. I heard winds in the background just said, say that people can start the game now. So, we have about 75 minutes to go from here. Let's see how this match turns out. Dials are being set at the moment. And it looks like uh, there are a couple of big wide areas for the Y-Wings to fight in. So, let's see if Casper is able to repeat the, the feed. And it's really strange sitting here, you know, as a Dane I have to root for the Danish player, of course. So, uh, at the same time, it's very, very hard to sit rooting for someone not playing the Imperial side. <coughs> Let's see what happens here. Kasper is uh, using pretty much the same movement as last time. And it looks like they agreed that while Casper fiddles his four Y-Wings into their final position, that Rasmus can just start moving his ship. And uh, apparently Countess Riot has been out drinking, so she starts the game off with a K-turn. Must have typed that in on autopilot while being drunk. Or perhaps it's some sort of delaying action. And it looks like that Colonel Vesery will do just the same. And Rasmus would, of course, like to uh, pull Casper into the fight. Try to make him fly through the asteroids, maybe splitting up those kill boxes uh, and trying to avoid being caught. He wants to try to avoid being caught in a, a kill box from all of them. And of course Casper will try to repeat the feat from the last match, finding one ship, ionize it and then capitalize on it. But we have a, a pretty straightforward uh, slow play from the Imperial player, keeping the Pelt bus in the corner and having the defenders flying back and forth, just waiting for the right moment to swoop in and start shooting. And of course the defenders with the X7 title are very, very survivable, uh, backed up by the dice modification of Palpatine. Palpatine can any time in each round, once, change any one dice to another result of his choosing. And this means that in those instances where you, your dice more or less fail you, you actually have Emperor Palpatine to, uh, to support you and back you up. So uh, the X7s are very survivable, but the title of the X title they get to every time they dial in a maneuver with a speed of 3, 4, 5, they will of course get uh, a free evade token and three defense dice backed by a defense token, or an evade token backed by perhaps a focus token and having the Emperor, you know, as insurance are very, very hard to take out. But Casper actually has a list that might be able to burn through it, throwing a, a 
a full round of attacks from first the primary weapons and then from the iron cannons and four ships can actually burn through those tokens and green defense dice that will inevitably fail him at some point so this could be a very interesting matchup if Casper gets the fight where he wants it and of course Hasmus job is to try to lure him into splitting up the ships and then pouncing on, on the stragglers <coughs> and the Y-Wing is really not a very maneuverable ship Casper has chosen the Aquamech here so whenever he spends a focus he gains a target lock and that makes his iron cannons really potent because they will usually always be able to attack with with a full range of rerolls but the ship is not very maneuverable because he hasn't chosen the, the mech that usually turns uh, some of his green maneuvers, or red maneuvers into greens and that means that there's a lot of red on that uh, Y-Wing dial he has to to maneuver around here but let's see what happens this could be uh, 75 minutes of uh, standing in a corner and, and trying to bait in the Y-Wings and then we'll have a final salvo of 8 dice versus 8 dice that would be kind of anticlimactic but let's see what happens <coughs> and of course if sound is off again please let me know so I can try to fiddle with it I'll try to talk as clearly as and coherently as possible and I'll promise not to uh, breathe any helium balloons to reply to a comment in the chat section. No, I don't think that firing arc is, is turned the wrong way. I think he's <laughs> he's doing it on purpose. Yes, and Casper is taking a maneuver into the table. And it looks like Rasmus is just repeating his back and forth here. So. <clears throat> this is back and forth and back and forth with the defenders. Let's see what happens one when will he break out of the back and forth movement here and he of course has to time it rightly because uh, if he's caught in the wrong spot uh, Casper might actually uh, be able to force one of his ships off the table so he has to be careful not to be too predictable in his 4k turns This could be the turn where he turns inward instead of, uh, or maybe next turn he will he will make a K turn. This turn and next turn he will then move forward and then not repeat the sequence. And in the meantime, Casper looks like he will either continue straight ahead or turn left into the table. It's right in the screen, but left from where Casper is standing. But let's see when they reveal the dials. <coughs> And of course, just as like time, if there's anything you want to know, just ask and uh, I'll try to do my best to answer you either in the chat or I'll answer directly here in the commentary. <coughs> Casper is plowing forward as fast as his slow little Y wings can. Chop, 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 chop boats ready to unleash the fire of the iron cannons. And of course now the defenders are equipped with the X7 title, so it's not historically correct. Normally a 
historically the defenders was actually equipped with iron cannons as well in, in the TIE Fighter game. And Casper is uh, breaking off one of his ships to avoid that rock there. So uh, opening up a little. And this could be the opening that Rasmus is, is waiting for. And I'm just wondering, what do you call a manure where you keep, you know, stroking back and forth with a ship? Nothing really comes to mind. Stroking back and forth and, you know, repeating the back and forth movement. There must be a name for that manure. I'm not sure yet. Somebody will probably make it up for me. Let's see. But uh, Kaspar has opened up his kill box a little. And will Rasmus uh, turn into the board now? Will he continue straight ahead? And what will Palpatine do? Palpatine brooding in the corner. <clears throat> and if we focus on Casper here for a minute, he's the last remaining Dane, of course, of the top four players. And just in the game before, he beat out an Imperial list. And in this game, he's facing an Imperial list in the semi final. And should he uh, win this game, he will go on to play the winner of the other semi final that stands between the Swedish Christoph Bengtsson and uh, the Norwegian Sverre Bakkeli. And both of those players are playing an Imperial List. So should Casper uh, win this one, he will face his third Imperial List <laughs> in the top eight games. So that could be interesting, seeing him going all the way. And I must admit, uh, when I saw Casper's list, I was a little surprised and said, oh, whoa, you went to top, top eight with that? That's pretty impressive. But after uh, spectating the, the match he played just before, uh, I, can, I can really see that he, he plays that list very skillfully. And it was a pleasure to watch. Now the question is uh, if he has an answer to this castling maneuver that Rasmus is, um, is using here. And the castling is, of course, it's a, it's a viable option to use. It. Uh, it's not terribly entertaining what you watch, but you have to play to your list strength and, and Rasmus of course feels that he has a distinct advantage by doing so. So let's see what happens. <coughs> Looks like we have 19 people watching with me here. So now uh, 21 we just jumped to. So I hope you enjoy the game. And uh, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat and I'll do my best to. Oh, now it looks like Casper misjudged the maneuver here and is actually landing on a rock with one of his wire wings. And this is, of course, exactly what Rasmus hoped would happen. And he loses his shield from that uh, rock deployment and uh, this is exactly what was was uh, Rasmus's thing to hope for getting the wirings to open up spread out fly through the asteroids and uh, have their approach messed up and now uh, the question will be whether or not Rasmus feels he's in a, a good position to exploit it because now those firing arcs are not as overlapping as they usually would be. <coughs> and it looks like uh, he might have anticipated 
something would happen in this term because this is not the four forward slash k term for the countess. She moves five forward and gets her complementary F8 token. And then she's taking a target level, it looks like. And it looks like it's just outside of range two, so it's a range three shot. And of course, the iron turret cannon only has a range of one and two. So he won't be able to uh, to shoot back with his iron cannon this turn, Casper. And this means that this firing engagement is uh, an advantage to, to Rasmus or Countess Riot. So let's see what happens when we go to the combat phase. And uh, Rasmus is trying to maximize the impact by uh, using push the Malin and uh, has added the target lock and pushes the limit to get a free focus which of course stresses counters right and we see here that Rasmus' second defender also moves five forward so now he's opening up and leaving the the corner now <coughs> And as really common here, yes, uh, he swapped the tar target lock, uh, but it's correct now, I think. <coughs> and let's see what happens here. The Y wing firing, normal firing, gets target lock. And the second Y-Wing fire. It looks like he forgot to spend his focus to get the target lock on that first Y-Wing. And he spends the focus there and gets the target lock. <coughs> so now he's preparing himself for an engagement where he will be able to have target lock focus if he can keep right in the sights. But of course, with the iron cannon outside of range, Rai will be free to move as she pleases next turn. Are we waiting for the dials to be revealed? Let's see if anything interesting is, is apparent on the field. One of the stragglers there is on the far left on the screen. Looks like we can can open wide in, swing wide in, and get a full wheel and feel the fire. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to do with those other Y-Wings. The rock placement right there in the middle of the table is not to his advantage at the moment. It kind of restricts his movements. So Kappa will have to work around that. And the big question is what uh, Rasmus will do. Will we just try to uh, fly the hill out of there and turn in? Yes, Fasikel, he, uh, he does have the BTL title. If you uh, scroll up in the chat, you can see that I typed in uh, both of the lists. But basically, it's, uh, it's four Y-Wings with the BTL title and Iron Cannons, and then he has the Acromech. <coughs> so, uh, for those new to the chat, if you haven't seen it, you can scroll up in the chat. I typed in both lists, but I can repeat them here. There's four Y-Wings. All of them equipped with Iron Turret Cannon, Acromech, and the title. And uh, Rasmus is flying a, a pretty standard uh, PALP defender list. There's Omicron with the Palpatine and, uh, and uh, the 
what is it called, the collision detector equipped, and then he has a Countless Riot with Push the Limit, TIE X7 title and Twin 9 engines, and he has Colonel Vasari with Duke and TIE X7 title. <coughs> And I forgot to mute my phone, so you just heard my mother calling. I better mute her. Sorry about that. <coughs> Apparently she doesn't know that I'm here doing this today. Oh no, it's your mom. And there she's calling again. Okay, mom muted. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, yeah, you can call them Commonwealth Defenders, I call them Help Defenders. But potato, potato. Mute fail indeed. <laughs> we can control everything. And I really need to have the sound on my phone because my daughter might be calling me and she takes precedence over everything else. So sounds the list in German, somebody timing. I don't speak German that very well. Basically, I can ask for two beer and I can tell people the way to the shower. Whoops, that was me being rude again. I'll try not to do that too often. Um, sorry about that. Zwei mal beer, bitte. Okay, here we see the classic move by Riot, a K-turn, followed by Barrel Roll, and she is lining up for the shots. And we see a, a three-turn being blocked by a Y-Wing, which isn't that bad for, uh, for the Colonel. This means that he can have two defenders firing at the same target and he will avoid retaliation fire from one of those uh, Y-Wings which is always nice <coughs> and my eyesight could be off but I don't think that the far Y-Wing has the range to, uh, to an iron cannon on him so he will just have to suffer two iron cannon shots here and he might actually be able to, uh, to escape that and even if he doesn't, he at least is not faced with a board edge. So, uh, let's see how this turns out. Colonel firing first, looks like two hits and a crit. And uh, the fence dies, looks like a focus. And the uh, Y-Wing, does it have a focus token or not? It doesn't. So he's removing all three shields, and the Y-Wing is now entirely open for an attack. <coughs> and uh, Rasmus appears to be attacking the range 1 ship. Spends a focus and turns that into 4 hits. And the green dice fails him, as green dice usually do. And he loses shields and takes one point of damage so uh, starting to deal damage on two different Y wings I would have thought he would try to concentrate fire on one of them but he's uh, he's taking the range one shots in both instances on different ships uh. <coughs> then it's the Y wings turns to uh, Return the favor. And now Casper has to decide where he wants to focus his fire. He's taking an ordinary shot with a hit and a crit on Colonel Vessery. 
and something happened there. Catcom would like him to wait on the defense roll. I think he's considering spending his target lock here. So maybe, but not entirely sure. He might actually want to keep the target lock until uh, firing his iron cannon is that? Yeah, he's taking the primary shot with a hit and a crit. And uh, the defender spends an evade token. <coughs> He cancels one. No, he doesn't. A little bit. Does he want to avoid the straight up shield loss or does he want to avoid the. He's removing shields, I think. He's removing one shield from the defender and keeps his, his evade token. And this is, of course, the firing with the iron cannon. Casper spends a focus. And acquires a target lock. Yes. And this looks like bad news for Rasmus. He can't really do anything about that. And this means that he will lose another shield. Down to one shield. But more importantly, if this was an iron shot, and it was. He uh, is now ironized, and everybody knows where he will be facing the next round. And he won't be able to get his free weight because he can't type in a 3 4 5 move. So, Casper uh, is now trying to set up the kill box on the Colonel. <coughs> Let's see if he can pull it off. It's one hit, or crit maybe, and an evade. And the iron cannon again. Second iron cannon. Two hits. And he spends an evade. And he uses a coin to represent the Emperor. And then he spends the Emperor to turn the other one into an evade as well. So he only received one iron token, but of course, since it's a small ship, one iron token is all it takes. Final shot from the Y Wing over there, looks like it's taken. It might not be in range of the Emperor. It is. So we're firing two dice through a rock range three. So that's actually two defense dice against the three. One hit and a focus. So he gets a target lock from the Acromech. And Rasmus rolls one away, will lose a shield. <coughs> and uh, then there's the return fire from Helvetine. Uh, he will fire on the already damaged Y Wing, it seems, a range 3 shot. And here we see. I can't see the dice because one of them fall outside. He spends a target lock to reroll two of them and rolls into two hits and a crit, it looks like. Uh, a focus. And he doesn't have a focus, it looks like. Or does he? He does. So he awaits one of those, but that means that he takes one hit and a critical. And he has a weapon malfunction. And he's using the new damage deck. And with the new damage deck, this means that all of his attacks will now have one dice fewer, as far as I recall. So now he will attack with one dice on his main weapon and two dice on his iron cannon, making this Y Wing quite hampered in his attack, but it's also virtually dead now. But uh, that's not a bad crit for Rasmus to see his opponent suffer. But we are back to Dias now. Vesery only has one place to go, and uh, unless I'm mistaken, Casper will probably dial in uh, at least two, if not more, uh, K turns with his Y wings here in order to kill the defender that he has already wounded. Uh, the far left Y wing will probably do a wide turn in as well. And unfortunately for Rasmus, since he doesn't have the initiative 
he won't be able to use the the lambda to fly in or block some of those K turns. So all he really can hope is to move it forward and then at least uh, retaliate and make sure that he's thinning out the rank of Y wings. Uh, the big question here for Riot is actually whether she will be able to perform one of her K turns. It all depends on how far along Casper will move his his Y wing. <coughs> But the game is still wide open. One of the Y wings is almost dead. The other one is shieldless. And uh, Colonel hasn't taken too much damage, so he might actually survive another round of engagement. Yes, I've been thinking that myself. But one of the problems with the Y wings is their lack of mobility. Somebody's asking here in, in the chat whether or not uh, why not turn all the Y wings towards the lambda and then just burn it down. And it's an entirely viable option. Uh, the problem is that the lack of mobility for the Y wings might mean that they get caught too much and will simply be uh, annihilated from behind while they try to take out the lambda. But it's absolutely a doable option. But I do think that Casper here might also get, you know, kind of tunnel vision and focusing on the fact that he now has a defender which is ionized and he has an option of taking it out and, and he did that to perfection in the last game we watched him ionized the defender focused fired it down switched to a new defender ionized it and then focused fired it down and it worked out like a charm both times so in Casper's mind I, uh, I would imagine right now there's a picture of, of him doing just the same so uh, but let's see maybe he uh, he pulls out the surprising move here and he is using one of them to block so he's basically blocking the defenders one forward by sacrificing firing power of one of his ships and then he's taking the other one and turns towards the pub shuttle <coughs> so maybe he's doing exactly what Nikolai was advocating here and actually shifting the target to burn down that lambda. Now the question is what maneuver Rasmus has chosen for the lambda because if he's moving it far enough, enough along it will of course block. Uh, but this could actually be a life saving round for, uh, for that severely damaged Y wing. Because if uh, those two ship bombs he won't be in a position to uh, to shoot down the Y wing. And here we see the K turn. So he will have one Y wing firing at the rear section of the defender. And the other defender reveals its dice to... Now they're discussing where that... Target log is from. <coughs> now we're revealing the last... Y wing dial. And he's turning into the... And has some... Maybe has a fire log. But this could be a situation of only having uh, two Y-Wings firing on the Defender. Uh, one actually, because the Defender will bump the forward one. <coughs> and the slow one forward from Rasmus means 
that he will not bump the Y wing, so that Y wing might actually go up into a ball of flame now. So this kill box is not quite as effective as the one he demonstrated earlier and might actually not cost him more than he's taking out. With uh, potentially one or two Y wings firing on the defender, it might re escape with its life intact. And it appears that uh, if the signature move of the counters is the K-turn, as expected, uh, he will actually be in a, a pretty good position. So So let's see what happens here. Sorry, I have to take care of something off screen. So, signature move from the counters. And then we'll see uh, getting, of course, the complimentary in a token. And now he's considering what to take. He's moving the target lock over and then he'll push the limit. And then he will probably try to take. Take out that wire wing. And the colonel only has one option. He's removing all of his iron tools, moving one forward and bumping into an wire wing. Which it looks like it leaves him in the firing arc of two Y-wings <coughs> so let's see what happens here but this could actually very well end up with a turn where Casper will lose two of his Y-wings and is this Riot firing first? they must have Determined that the colonel doesn't have firing out or something, or maybe they're firing out of turn. Okay, they are agreeing to do some sort of. No, I don't think. Uh, that's one hit and two crits into the wine wing blocking. I'm not sure what the result of that was. Where was Kretzner? Okay, that Y-Wing took a damaged engine and a direct hit, so it has one hull left. <clears throat> and now we see the... <clears throat> we 
see the defenders of Aiden. And he will spend a focus, get a target lock, one hit, spends the target lock. And the iron cannon lands two hits, it looks like, it could be three actually. And he spends the Emperor to avoid the last one, so he's not ironized yet. <coughs> And yes, unfortunately, the camera is at the highest solution I can get it to, so I can't do anything about the quality of the picture. Terribly sorry about that. <coughs> this is what we are working with at the moment. It's borrowed equipment. And... Uh, but it does the job, I think. And at least I have uh, a, a few guys being able to come and give me a few updates now and then about what crits and stuff are rolled, so let's see what happens here. The Lambda is being attacked and receives one iron target, loses a shield. Gets a target lock. And the Lambda is taking a few shields off again. But it's still healthy. And the Iron Cannon. One hits. Spends the target lock. And. Asmus now debating whether or not to uh, spend a focus to avoid being double ionized in the Lambda. And he actually keeps his focus in order to maximize his uh, four dice attack against that one wing right in front of him. <coughs> So now we see a four dice attack against a very, very wounded Y wing. Um, unless he wants to shoot at something else. <coughs> what Rasmus has to do now is he has to remember that he can't let that Y wing survive to K turn because then it will just be right in the rear of his lambda. And he realizes that and fires at it. Four dies with a focus. And he blanks out. That's one hit. And let's see what the defense is. It blanks out as well. And that wiring takes one damage. And is still in the game. That was a very, very critical round for Rasmus. He did not manage to kill any of the wire wings. So this could turn out to be a really, really, really bad turn for next time. Yes, that's absolutely correct, Nikolai, but I am not allowed to commentate on that. I'm just spectating the game, so I can't say anything. But it looks like he did, actually. Well, dials are being set. The lambda is double ionized, it will move one forward. But uh, none of the defenders are ionized at the moment, so they have free range of movement allowed to them. And uh, Colonel Vessery escaped the kill box and should actually be able to uh, just make his 4k turn unless it's blocked by one of the wire wings. Um, so, 
I do not think he turned it off with an action. He still has the reminder. It could be another crit, of course, but I don't think so. I'll go check that in just a minute. The guys themselves actually found out that the, the attack was performed with too many dice and they've uh, arranged to sort out the issue with a casual fist fight later on. I'll stream and comment on that as well. No, but they're taking it in, in a cheerful mood and good stride. Mistakes happen sometimes. It was uh, six long games yesterday and, you know, there's the nerves of being on the stream and everything. But both guys are cool with it and uh, we're just carrying on. <coughs> Mistakes like this sometimes happens, and there's the crit token to remember it, and still sometimes shit is forgotten during the heat of the battle by both opponents. So, <coughs> speaking from experience, I don't think Casper is the kind of guy to do that on purpose. <coughs> so, let's not get carried away with the pitch and tar yet. So it seems to be a quite intensive decision making on Erasmus here. Not really sure what he wants to do with, uh, with the counters. And Casper is debating uh, that top Y wing. Is he going to try to make a block with it? Uh, to block one of the K turns that might show up? Will he swing in? It's going to be an interesting turn. But absolutely devastating for Rasmus last turn that he was not able to kill even a single one of the Y-Wings off. And at this moment we have two healthy Y-Wings and two very, very damaged Y-Wings. So it's a match of attrition now. <coughs> and I can see there's a couple of new people popping in to watch and of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat and I'll do my best to, uh, to get a reply out. <clears throat> and I'll remind once again that this is Paul Erik Holmelund speaking. I'm just borrowing Christopher's account to stream and comment on, so please don't hold him responsible for any rude comments I sh shout out. He actually asked me to be polite and I'm trying to the best of my ability and of course I will fail from time to time because I'm a rude motherfucker. And this caught me by surprise. I was absolutely sure he was going to, uh, to do the Koikram turn. I did not expect that at all. So, uh, <clears throat> but there's no room for it, and he will, uh, he will bump the lamp instead. I'm not sure what Tops is. Um, torpedo, perhaps, but the answer is no. Um, if people haven't seen it, you can scroll up and read the lists above, or I can repeat them here for you. Casper is playing a 
four squadron of Y-Wings. They have the title, so they can only fire out of their main arc with their secondary weapons. And then they have the Acromac and Iron Turret. I'm not sure what you're commenting on, Peter. Uh, if if we're talking about the two turn, yes, that looked very strange indeed. And I was absolutely certain he was going to uh, to use the Quadron turn to get behind the Atlanta. It was, in my opinion, the only thing that really made sense. But uh, maybe Casper had a, a different plan. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not really sure about that bomb, whether or not he fitted there. I, I really don't think there was room for him. I think uh, the pecs were, were charging, uh, so I don't think he could have, have fit in there on the two turn. But the thing that, that baffles me is the fact that he didn't uh, make the K-turn behind the Lambda, um, but there must be uh, a reason behind it. Yeah, I'm not sure, Peter. I think the knobs might have touched, but uh, I have the, the same view as you do, and uh, the players at the table decided there wasn't, there wasn't room for it, so that's the way it is now. Okay, right, going into the table, and <clears throat> it looks like the 4K is not blocked. Let's see when they move the Y wing out of there. Rasmus is getting his defender, and there was room for it. So, perfectly executed Koi Grand turn from the defender, and in a fine position to open fire, evade, focus, and unfortunately there's no target lock from, <coughs> for him to uh, maximize the attack, but uh, he has it. Or he could try to finish them one off. And that might actually be what he's doing. <clears throat> I guess the guys hurt you because the iron tokens are gone now. <clears throat> Let's see what do we have. We have, we have uh, two hits from Asmus. Um, two defense because there's an extra for the range and he jukes one of those and of course he bombs so there's no way to do that and this means that that wiring finally blows up and I'm pretty sure that after the match Casper will uh, regret not making that K turn but it's so easy to sit here and the safety behind the screen and you know thinking about what should you have done standing in there and having the stress piled on it's not quite as easy and here we see the second Y-Wing go up in flame <coughs> and all of a sudden this match is Rasmus's to lose with a full list against two Y-Wings it's going to be very, very hard for him not to win this one. The Y Wing here has a range. I think they're removing the Y wing to see if there's actually room for the iron cannon shot. That's quite crucial for Casper. And I think they rule against it. 
So they uh, agree upon a range three shot. So just a whiffed in the primary and then switches to the next chip. Two hits or a hit or a crit on the primary attack, which is he spends the focus and spends Palpatine to avoid that attack. And then the iron cannon will punish him. Two hits, spends the target lock, still two hits on the iron cannon. And I can't see whether or not he uh, evaded that. I think he did. It looks like there was two evades. And now the palp shell gets a range two shot. <coughs> On the Y wing. And this at this point it's pretty much clean up for Rasmus. Those uh, two Y wings are not really aligned into taking shots, Ryan will be able to make uh, the shortest possible K-turn and uh, get into the fight right away. The Lambda is, is able to get into the fight and he should be able to uh, very quickly focus fire down at least one more of the Y-Wings. But even if the game should go to time, he's clearly in the lead now. So. Uh, Casper really has to pull out the magic rabbit now. <clears throat> and of course the winner of this match will uh, enter the final of the Copenhagen Regional. And in the final match he will uh, either face uh, Christopher Bengtsson from Sweden so it could potentially become an uh, entirely uh, Swedish final, or he could uh, face off against Sverre Bagley from Norway. So, uh, but uh, no matter what, we will uh, we will see defenders on both sides in the final. If he faces off against Christopher Bengtsson, we will see uh, three defenders. And if it's against uh, Sverre from Norway, it will be two defenders and Omega leader. So, uh, Imperial versus Imperial in the final. And it's always nice to see the good guys in action. Absolutely, Ronnie. It will be uh, it will be two defender lists because <laughs> it will either be four defenders in the final or five defenders in the final, unless Casper uh, manages to pull out you know the magic stunt from Hill now to turn this game around. But I don't think he uh, I don't think he has the trick to pull this one off now. Well, the Dingaroos were beaten. Um, there have been at least three Dingaroos lists, and I actually, I actually think there were more, but they didn't make it into uh, the top eight. And uh, maybe the time of Dingaroo is over. Maybe people went to play against it, or perhaps they were just unlucky. Sometimes it's all in the matchup and, and the opponent you face. So, no Dingaroos for the top eight spots this time. <clears throat> no, he made a, a one bank uh, and yes, that's entirely reasonable. That I thought he would do the 2k turn, uh, but no. No, I mean 3k turn, of course, but uh, he took the safe bet and just 
slow plated around. <clears throat> and now we see uh, a wire wing loose in. Total, a total of two. Hull is taking structural damage. That's the crit, and it looks like he has two health left. So that wire wing is uh, about to go up in flame as well. Yeah, the infamous 2k turn. I don't think we can see that. Uh, let's see. That's one of the. That's one of the. Tie advanced pilots, she can do it by uh, adjusting her dial. <laughs> Juno, but um, she's not here. And time is just called to be 15 minutes long left on this match. So, Casper uh, has 15 minutes to uh, come up with a plan he has to save him. It appears that he bombed with his first ship. And and will in turn get bombed by the Lambda? bump party. The question will be whether the the last defender will then actually bump as well and just stay in place. Doing the hard one, which causes stress, and Colonel Vessery will move. It looks like the 4K turn, but I'm not entirely sure on the template. I didn't see where he picked it up. Yeah, it's the 4K turn, and there's plenty of room for it. So a critically damaged Y-wing is now lined up for the shot. And Colonel Vessery will take a range 2 shot, I think. And this could be... It looks like it. <coughs> 2 damage. Both of them criticals because of the critical before. And this takes the third Y-Wing out of the match. And now this is really just the clean-up phase, more or less. But Casper uh, is taking it in, uh, in good cheer. Trying to scratch the paint of the Lambda. <coughs> the Lambda takes its first real damage. Maybe the Emperor is starting to become nervous now. And the Emperor returns and forces a crit through. Of course, there's still shields on that ship, so all three shields off. And now there's five hull on Casper's side on one Y wing. And if I'm not much mistaken, uh, Riot is entirely shielded and hauled up. The Lambda has four hull left. And I'm not entirely sure on Colonel Vesery, but I do believe he has one shield and three hull left. At this point, I could be wrong though. We have about 10 minutes left now.
Sorry, I was just called away for a minute there. <clears throat> Colonel Vettery repeats it's 4K, but no, that's a 3 4, but that's a bump blocked by the Lambda, but still sets it up for a perfect round of shooting, more or less. Three attack dies here, with us entirely. But, of course, Colonel Vessery can use other people's target lock to acquire target lock. He does that right here, getting two hits and forces... No, he just takes the two hits. That's two damage into the Y wing, three hull left. And... There's... Two hits into Vessery and Spencer Focus gets the target lock. Vessery actually evades that by spending his weight token. And there's the iron cannon shot. Three hits. And he takes one damage. And of course gets the dreaded iron token placed on him. And now here's the four dice attack from the Empress shuttle. Maybe finishing off this game. There's one crit. Spends the Emperor and get the second crit. Let's see if Casper uh, can avoid any of the damage. That looks out of focus. So blinded pilot and damaged sensor array was the two crits here. And that is the game. Casper has been defeated. And Rasmus will go on to fight the final. I will uh, do my best to find out who uh, his opponent will be. And I will uh, terminate the sound from now and be back as soon as possible with information about time for the final. As well as who will play Rasmus in it. I'll be back to you.